I knew I had a problem on my hands because, and it wasn't, now, and let me explain the problem too, because when I got saved, my problem wasn't, is the Bible right? When I put my faith in Jesus, Jesus is the word. I already decided and knew, you know, the Bible's right. I mean, that's where my salvation, that's where my soul was resting on to be saved and go to heaven. I knew that that was right. But what about then all of this stuff that I learned? What, how does that fit in? How does that work? I talked to my brother about it for a little while and, and he was... He had all, he's a little bit further along the path than I was, and he gave me some, some other resources to read into. And, and very good resources. I don't remember exactly. One of the things I read, I remember it's called Bone of Contention. And that talked about the fossil record. It talked a little bit about how they make the, uh, the extrapolate entire creatures off of bone fragments and come up with what they think creatures looked like off of very, very little, which you're not told about in the textbooks, by the way. Anything that's going to cause you doubt and be like, wait a minute, how, like, how in the world do you come up with that? And with the, the lies of the, you know, the Cro-Magnon man, and they show you all these Neanderthal men and stuff, and it's like, do you know how they build these people off of? Do you know how small the fragments are that they find? And they just say, this is what it was. They don't find these full skeletons. Those are artist renditions. Those are people with imaginations telling you, well, th based off of this fragment, this is what we think it looked like at the end of the day. You know, someone's going to say, no, there's a, there's a scientific way to do that. Look, I've looked into it. I've read about it. Personally, you, you read it for yourself and, this, and come up with your own conclusions. I believe that the Bible is true. But they'll, they'll, um, they'll come up with, with various methods to, to try to show you that, no, see, look, we came from animals. We came from apes. And um, that was just one thing. I, you know, and there's other things I looked at. And understanding the scientific method and being all into that, you know, I was looking for the more technical arguments to show why what I had learned was not true. And one of the big things for me is when I learned more about the radiometric dating. And uh, more, more familiar known as like carbon-14 dating, if you've heard that, that term before. Carbon-14 is, pro carbon is probably what most people have heard of, but it's not the only method that's used. They use argon, argon dating, and basically these are elements. So to break it down real simply, our atmosphere, carbon isn't just about everything. And there's, there's carbon in the atmosphere, and the carbon gets transferred to plants through photosynthesis. They, they receive some of the, the, the carbon that's in the atmosphere. And when the animals eat the plants, so biological creatures, they eat the plants, they absorb that carbon that was in the atmosphere. So basically what they have in their body, the amount of carbon-14 that they have in a specific isotope, okay? These are radioactive isotopes is what they are. This is radiation attached to, you know, to carbon. The, 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 the element is, you know, the... the the proper chemical way of saying it is C14, carbon-14, that comes into the body of, of an organic organism. It's supposed to reflect what's in the atmosphere at the given time. Once that creature dies, they stop consuming the carbon. The carbon starts to decay. There's known half-lives of these elements. Um, and they say, you know, with carbon, it's like 5,000 something years, I don't know the number offhand, but it's, you know, there's a certain amount of years, and they say, well, the, the, based on how much was there at the beginning and how much has decayed, we could determine how many years have passed since this animal died. In a nutshell, that's the way the science is supposed to work. The problem is that the entire formula is based on assumptions. For example, the assumption that the rate of decay is a constant is one of the assumptions. Now, when they first came up with this method in like the 1940s, they thought it was a constant. Since then, it's been proven that no, actually, there have been changes in the atmosphere that have affected the amount of carbon up and down, the carbon-14. So that you can't assume it's just a constant. But what they did to, to handle that is they say, well, we've been taking these measurements of the atmosphere since like the late 1800s. So we know how much carbon's been there. And 
they, they adjust their dating for that, but they didn't go back and have these measurements going back for hundreds or thousands of years. So you have no idea going any back further than what's this short time frame. But what they'll say is, oh, but we know why they changed. We know why. Because there's been this increase in burning fossil fuels, which impacts the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere, is one, is one of the, the main reasons. And then, what was the other one? I forget what the other one was. It doesn't matter, right? There, there are two recent events in history that, that they're saying is... is well, we know that these things happened that impacted the, the amount of C14 in the atmosphere. How do you know that other events haven't happened throughout history that would affect the same thing? How do you know that, you know, there haven't been a, a whole bunch more volcanic eruptions in history as, you know, in, in outlying areas that aren't even, even very populated for people to write down that these historical events happened? You, know, you don't know. And when you're going to start saying that the Earth is, is way, you know, we think the Earth is about six, you know, a little over 6,000 years old. We don't know. I don't, we don't think that. We know that. Because God told us it. Because it's written in the Bible and you could, you could actually figure out how old the earth is. Amen. But they're saying it's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions, billions of years old. And you're dealing with that type of time frame. They want you to believe that animals are becoming something else. But, oh, the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere, is, oh, that's remained the same. While everything else is changing and turning into other animals over hundreds of millions of years, that stayed constant. It's nonsense. 